MIPS was uh, acquired by Imagination in uh, 2013. Uh, it was acquired because we had uh, a long-term view of how the industry would evolve, how significant general purpose processing would be and, and will be as part of that. Uh, during that time, we've made significant investments uh, in terms of resourcing, in terms of working with our ever-strengthening ecosystem, uh, building much stronger relationships with our, our, our customers, potential customers and their customers. And um, today, uh, in 2016, we are starting to see uh, the fruits of uh, all that investment. Uh, for one thing, we now have um, a lot of very good new products that's coming to the marketplace. Um, they're actually available now, uh, uh, covering a whole range of applications. Uh, a significant focus for us is uh, cons consumer, uh, networking, IoT, automotive, and we've actually got products that speak to all of those domains. Um, those products have a very strongly differentiated position, and the feedback that we're actually getting from customers is um, very positive. Uh, in fact, if I make the comparison between where we were, say, a couple of years ago, um, when for, for the most part there was a feeling of uncertainty about you know, MIPS's viability, we're now in a position where there is a, an increased appetite in the market for engaging with imagination to use MIPS technology. And the MIPS technologies that, that, and products we have are actually fit for purpose to address uh, the growth areas. Um, we have uh, a very strong uh, story and technologies associated with security uh, and this is actually a superior to the capabilities of, of our competitors. We also have uh, a very uh, strong position in terms of what we're doing with regards to performance efficiency. Um, we, we have multi-threading as part of our, 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 our CPU capability and this really does give us much more optimal and efficient use of, uh, of processing than what's uh, generally available from alternatives. So products that have these capabilities are readily available. Customers that we're engaging with have a very strong positive uh, motivation to working with us. Um, we have a, a, a very competent engineering team and we've got a, a very effective sales organization to actually help our, our customers you know, realize their dreams. So I actually feel very uh, positive and very strong about where we are today. Uh, it's been a long haul <laughs> because, um, you know, it's been over two years of actually, you know, transforming an organization, adding significant resources, um, defining a roadmap, making a decision about where we want to go and executing to that. And uh, we're, we're not there, but the trend is just fantastic. So, so traditionally, um, we've always been very strong in, um, in, in digital consumer, digital home. So typically, uh, uh, set-top box, digital t TV type applications. And even today, we have uh, the, the market leadership in those applications. Um, there is a characteristic of the way in which we define our MIPS uh, processes, which means that they're, they're highly configurable. Um, and so you can actually have a device uh, which, depending on uh, uh, which parameters you tweak, allows you to cover a wide range of applications. And, and that is, we have uh, basically a stratification of three classes of devices. We have the M class, which is associated with microcontroller and uh, cost effective and energy efficient embedded. We have uh, the I-Class, which is uh, where we have the performance efficiency, that's where we have the multi-threaded type products. And, and that basically addresses, uh, uh, I would say, a, a multitude of applications, whether you're talking about at the higher end, um, mobile, mobile computing applications, or whether you're talking about you know, deeply embedded applications. And then we have uh, the P-Class, which is more about uh, mobile computing, and also the possibility of addressing uh, networking applications and high-performance computing. So we already have this stratifications in terms of products, but in addition, each of those products themselves can be significantly uh, reconfigured. And that allows us to have a huge diversity. 
And so what tends to happen when um, companies license our technology is that they can actually license a particular product and they have the capability to span multiple applications with just a handful of our devices. So this is a, a, a significant characteristic associated with the way uh, Imagination and MIPS have developed and addressed the CPU market. I would say that uh, 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 traditionally, if you just look at, say, um, a business like uh, uh, Power VR, uh, the, the graphics, vision, and video uh, part of our, our organization, um, it has got a, a long track record for being uh, the innovative leader associated with graphics. Um, and that's still true today as it was in the past. As a company, we put a lot of effort in terms of you know, innovating and getting innovations into the market. Uh, we have, uh, I would say, an uncharacteristically long view of, of what it means to sort of help our partners succeed over a longer term. And, and we have, I would say, uh, a much higher proportion of very competent people in our organization versus uh, other companies. So we invest a lot in having the expertise to develop great products. So that, that, that's one thing. I talked about the Power VR because I wanted to make it very clear that whether you're talking about mobile or automotive applications, um, Power VR has dominated and has been the significant leader over well over a decade. Okay? And the next phase in products that we're actually developing in Power VR is, is actually going to, I would say, put us on another level and hopefully give our, uh, the companies that we're dealing with a, a, a real strong differentiated leadership position. So the graphic stuff, we're in a, a very good place. MIPS comes, comes at it from the point of view of having just, of being the, the longest standing uh, IP that's available for, from a, 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 a vendor perspective. It's been around for over three decades. Okay, so it's probably got the longest standing ecosystem. It's actually got a very rich ecosystem. Uh, and it's been addressing a wide variety of verticals. Now, because of the investments we've made, we're in a very good position to actually address, uh, um, I would say, differentiated products, but not just in terms of standalone uh, processes, but also in terms of the integrations with uh, graphics devices. We also have another product line, which is uh, our connectivity in Sigma. And this is something which is really addressing uh, the transformations that's going on in our world. It's, it's all about connectivity, intelligent connectivity. And we are the leading IP provider of intelligent connected devices. So when you take what we're capable of delivering in terms of graphics, which is having a massive impact in an advanced automotive, um, what we have in terms of CPUs, and it's worthwhile stressing that you know, our CPUs right, are being used as part of um, the leading a supplier of uh, ADAS systems in the world. Okay? And we're being used with this company because of the fact that um, we do have much greater performance efficiency than any alternative uh, a processor. And then if you take also the fact that we've got the connectivity aspect, it, you can really begin to see that um, for all the, the future applications that's going to be enabled, the combination of those three significant businesses and the other expertise that we have in terms of cloud-related services and IoT puts us in a very powerful position to help our customers enable some fantastic products and services.